What is going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Pod Scum. This right here, as you all know, is the podcast where we dive into the deep, dark, murky waters with a plethora of legendary guests. I am, of course, your host, your bastard of ceremonies, the number one scumbag, Rex Ruger. That's R E Triple X. You might also know me as AKA the King of Sleaze, AKA the Hair Metal High Priest, and most importantly, AKA Diamond David Lee Roth Jr. That's right, folks. Take a look, and it's undeniable at least it should be, that you are looking at the son of glam, the front man for the band, just smoked a few grams, I got a million fans, I'm your ice cream man, Mr. Wop, Bop, Loo, Bop, Wop, Bam, Bam, Shazam, hot damn, Woo. feeling good, everybody in the house, of course, is looking good, that is, of course, made possible by my favorite product, Spray responsibly, kids, and you too can have the quaff like raw. Coming to you as always from the lush lavender lounge of love, which has been rejuvenated, reinvigorated, redecorated, check out the new digs, one thing that's not new is my old pal, Keith Hernandez Puppet, the only texting puppet that I know of in the world. He will occasionally hit me up. Instead of speaking up, he just hits me up with some messages and hits me up with questions. He's a big help. He's an asset. He's my consigliere, my right-hand man, my everything. This is, of course, the No Frills podcast. You don't get any frills because we don't know how to give them to you. And plus, you get thrills, and that's a lot better. What are they, Rex, you might ask? Well, that's looking at these beautiful faces. And today is no different. I am excited about today's guest. Real excited. And he's here right now, as a matter of fact. So let's get down to it and chop it up with him on Pod Scum, because I can't wait. Man, you might have to get on that. Yo. Oh, this is a real honor. I can't believe this, man. I can't <laughs> believe up? it. How you doing, I can't man? believe it. I don't know <laughs> if you're laughing at me. I don't know if you're laughing at me or the or, or the hair, but I just want you to know that I do go to the same barber as Donnie Lalonde. <laughs> if, that, no, if, good. if that solves it for you. But listen, man, this How's is a real honor. I really appreciate I really appreciate you doing this, man, because I know you're a busy guy hey, and everything. Hey, man. hey, did you see the fight last night? You, well, that's what I wanted to get. Yeah, that's what I wanted to get your opinion on. As a guy who fought at a lighter weight, what was your assessment of it? Man, like I picked, I picked. I mean, I, I, I knew Giovanni Davis was gonna win. Yeah. And I thought it was gonna be by knockout, but I thought it was gonna be like with a, with a headshot, like an overhand left or something. Yeah. And um, but it was like I couldn't I lost, believe. Hold on, I, lo I, I lost your camera. I can't see you. Oh, there you, you, are, there you are. Yeah. But yeah. like I couldn't believe how. How much like the skill level was so different? Like, yeah. I you I mean I could just tell uh, everybody's saying like I mean you can give you can give a couple rounds to Ryan nah but you have to understand the tank was just playing that out. Yeah, yeah. Now what happens to a guy like that though? As a guy that's been in the ring yourself, that looked a little bit high to be a liver shot. Where exactly do you get hit when something like that stops you? Like I have no idea, but I could, here's what I could tell you. That here's what I could tell you. I know because I've been hurt. If you ever watched me fight, I've been hurt by Victor Victoria and Sosa. Okay. I mean, he had me knocked out. Uh, I know one thing. I watched. I've, I've been watching boxing my whole life, so I was watching Ryan Garcia fight Lou Campbell before this um, uh, Giovante Davis fight, and I seen him get up. And he got up the same way he got up in the second round, and he and he and he just, boom, he just straight fired. Man, this motherfucker is a maniac. Like he's just yeah. going right at you, type shit. Yeah. But here's what I want to tell you. He quit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he chose, like because I've been I've been hurt, and and I know I could tell, I could see, I could feel it. There's no doubt about it. Like he quit. Yeah. Like yeah. he could say anything else. No, nah, he knew he knew that he 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 goes back out there. He ain't going to get knocked out. He's going to get flattened. Yeah. Yeah. I so agree I with you there. Some people don't like to go out on their shield, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For, I mean, we jumped right into talking to the fight. Let me at least first tell my audience the great Paul Spadafora, who in his own right, should be a Hall of Famer. How do we get you into the Hall of Fame? What, 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 first of all, do you think that you are a Hall of Famer 
I mean, I I think that I could have been. It could have been. I don't think I I deserve it now that that everything happened to me. But I know one thing that is, as long as I if if I do the right thing as being by being a trainer, I have a chance to be a Hall of Fame trainer because sure. I don't think no one can see it see what I see. Now, do you feel like now? Do you feel like? Uh, and we've seen other uh, sports Hall of Fames do this. Obviously, uh, Pete Rose is kept out of the Baseball Hall of Fame for unrelated baseball. Well, he was betting on baseball. I mean, but but do you think though that that uh, so some of your uh, you know uh, out of the ring problems uh, does that keep you from the Hall of Fame? No, no doubt. I yeah, mean, no question. I mean, it kept me from everything. It kept me from all the fights that I had. I mean, I had fights that I, that, that that I got scheduled for, and I I jammed myself up. I, yeah. With alcohol, I'm an alcohol overdose and all that shit. Yeah. But, you know, that's the past. I'm just trying to forget about it and do the right thing. Just take it one day at a time. You know what I mean? That's all you can do, my brother. That's all you can do. So so, so get back into the training thing now. So so, do you have a stable of fighters? Because I know that you're working with your son. Or, or is he your main focus? Well, no, I work, I work with a stable of fighters. I got about five, six, seven fighters that I work with. They're green. I got yeah. they're green. Some some are. I got one pro. He got sixteen fights. I got you know what I mean. But it's just. But it. it I I really to be honest with you. I I, I I'm trying to be like uh, um. I want to be. I want to be good. Good with the kids, man. Because yeah. I want the kids to understand. This is a. This is a. If you can. If you can. Um. If you can. Uh. Uh put into the kids the knowledge that you need to have as a professional it'll number one number one you keep you, you, you when the more hits you take the worse you get right right you know what i mean and that's just a fact number two is your priorities on the street well that's really number one too the priorities on the street and what you do in everyday life that's gonna that means everything sure yeah. if you're not you can't mix alcohol drugs and boxing you can't mix women and but you just can't it's just a fact right you know it's what i mean I'm a, firm, a I'm a firm i'm a firm believer and like and this shit ain't gonna work out and nowadays like let me tell you something i was lucky to have a local promoter i had a, I, I wasn't signed to top rank i wasn't signed to uh main events or no right. big don king or nothing i had a guy who brought me up and he brought me up carefully Right. I was with the, I was with the, my I had Italian people that was my people, and yep. they moved me along the way they moved me along, and I got and I and I got a Shane, and Shane Mosley went to one forty seven and boom and opened the whole door up for for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, now you are certainly somebody who's known as a uh, 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 a very slick, uh, pure boxer. Uh, always made it look. When I watched your fights, you always seemed to make it look very effortless and very easy in there, without really looking like you, 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 you know. It, it, everything just looked like it came very natural to you. Did, did did boxing come naturally to you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was when I was a little when I all my life I was a good athlete and I was a real good break dancer and stuff like yeah. that. Actually, break dancing really helped me. You know what uh -oh. I mean? Get out the cardboard. Get out the cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 50 years old myself, so I remember breakdancing. Yeah. Yeah. And it like helped me and it helped me in a crazy way because I would do things like right now. I'm not really a right, I'm not really a southpaw. I'm really right-handed. You know what right. I mean? Right, right, but right. I just took that on on myself to be southpaw and I kept it in it worked, and that's what happened. And then when I got shot. It, it really the break dancing really brought brought it out of me because I had to yeah. get out the way in different like angles. Right. And make right, it right. look easy because number one thing you should always do is be cautious, be careful, cautious, and safe in the ring. That's what I know for a yeah. fact. Yeah, yeah. Now now you had uh 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 what was your upbringing like? Now you obviously, you know, your nickname was the Pittsburgh kid, you're a northeast guy. I'm an upstate New York guy, so you know, we are cut from a different cloth up here in the northeast. It's yeah. a tough area, you know, I mean, uh you know, how much of your upbringing uh really shaped who you were as a fighter? Cuz you didn't I mean, have any There's no doubt about it. I had a hard upbringing. I mean, yeah. I don't know, I, I, like hard. I don't know too many people that that they grew up like me. Yeah. You know, I went to like several schools, maybe like 30 different schools. You know, got kicked out of all of them. 
in and yeah. out of the, you know, I'm juvenile shit, the bull yeah. crap. You know what I mean? But when I tell you what, though, uh, the Pittsburgh kid never really was the Pittsburgh kid. It was my trainer was named PK. Yeah. Yeah. And I just called my I called his wife when he passed away. And I said, can I use PK as my name? And then they just took it and ran with the Pittsburgh kid. But that really wasn't my name. Yeah. So so. You know, there is, uh, and, and I would certainly uh, 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 encourage people out there uh, to go and find the footage on YouTube, but there is uh, very good footage of you in a sparring session, a, 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 a very competitive sparring session with Floyd Mayweather Jr. Uh, but why did that fight never come to fruition uh, for real? Uh, only, only, the only thing I could say is it, I don't really know that to be a, like why. But we, I, I was put on a shelf for a whole one time when he fought Victor Ortiz. I was supposed to fight. I thought I was supposed to fight him. My promoter was telling me that. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, whenever um he he had that rematch with um Jose Luis Castillo. Yep. I thought I was going to get the winner of that, and that never that never happened. You know, I just think that it, it probably had something to do with. I know I wasn't the fighter that was all in people's all in my my business like you know you know i just wasn't like that because i was brought up a different way right. you don't talk to your promoter you don't talk to your manager you let them do the work i'm the fighter i go to camp will you tell me to go fight i'm fighting whoever they put in front of me right right you know what i mean but I, there's no like i i just can't there's no way that it didn't happen from that side you know what I mean? And yeah. I just don't, and there's no, and no one can tell me that Floyd was, Floyd ain't scared. And Floyd's a beast. He's one of the best ever. He ain't Agreed. worried about me. You right. know what I'm trying to say? And right. I don't even really have the right to bring his name up. That's how I feel. Right. You feel, right. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, I but, do. Yeah. So, so I look at it like this. I just know for a fact that like, like I didn't get a chance to fight Tom. I didn't get a chance to fight um Floyd. Because of the YouTube. Me you hear me? Yeah. Yep. I believe personally that if 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 whoever put that YouTube shit out, they ruined my opportunity of fighting Floyd. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because because Floyd type of motherfucker that will be like. You know what, man, man? Hey, why do I don't need this dude? Who is this dude? It right. really, this dude really ain't shit for real. You know right. what I mean? So why give him a shot? You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Uh, That's so how I look at it. I, I want to get back a little bit into your uh, uh, upbringing. And correct me if I have any, any of this wrong, though. But uh, you actually spent a little bit of time homeless, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and 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 uh, your father also uh, overdosed? Yeah. Man, that's a fucking tough. Now, now, a lot of this stuff has got to make a young guy angry, but you didn't seem to really carry that anger into the ring. Like I said earlier, you seem like a very composed guy. But you, you know, uh, is that where the anger was going to the stuff that you were doing outside the ring? You know what, man? I'm gonna. I say that I, when I when I put alcohol in my body, it just mm -hmm. I turn I just turn into a whole different person. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, yeah. I never. I ain't Indeed, angry brother. now. Like I don't be angry just to be. But if I'm if when I'm clean, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of that, a lot, a lot of. That, I mean, not a lot. Every day, I told the, I told the judge, I, in one of my last case, I told the judge, I said, listen, I wouldn't even know who you was. I wouldn't know who Schumann was. I wouldn't know what the county jail was, the penitentiary was. Right. If I would never picked up a drink. Right. Right, right, and 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 uh, uh, how how much time are you currently celebrating uh, being sober? I'm doing, I'm doing good. I'm just trying to take it one day at a time. You know, awesome. what I mean? oh, that's good news. That's good. That's really good news. Uh, are you one of these guys who, even at your age, would entertain uh, getting into the ring again, or are you completely done with fighting? I mean, I would do some celebrity boxing type shit or exhibition. You know what I mean? Yeah. Other than, other than that, I got I got to stay in shape. I'm in the gym every day. You know what right. I mean? Right. Right. Where do you stand on these fights? Uh, uh, what's your opinion when you see these guys, uh, these gimmick type fights, where you see like a Jake Paul? Do you like these? Do you think these are good for boxing? Uh, not at all. But that's me, though. I don't want to. Right. I mean, you know what though? I, some guy said, some one of my buddies was talking to me, and he was like, he was like, 
it it makes different eyes come to boxing. Yeah, that's right. But different, some different, some eyes really don't deserve to be, don't really know about boxing and really care about boxing like that. Right. Like I'm right. I'm old school. Like I came up from the street, from the gutter. Yeah. You know, I agree the with only you. way I could put a food on my plate was to get that money. Right, right. You know what I mean? I, w I wasn't fighting for, like, trophies. You can't eat the trophy, you know what I mean? Right. And, like, these dudes got this, the, the uh, like, the, I don't they was calling um, Ryan Garcia, like, a, um, a YouTube sensation. I don't even know what this fuck that means. What does that mean? <laughs> I think what they mean is because he, you know, during this during during this long layoff that he had uh, before the Gervonta Davis fight, he is very active on social media quite a bit on Twitter and Instagram and these type of things. You know, what I mean, so I think that's more what they mean. But I do believe he is obviously a bona fide fighter, though. I mean, you don't. Oh, get the there's no question about Ryan. No doubt a about fighter. it. He, he was a sick, what a couple of na times nationals. Any times you win the nationals like that. Yeah. I mean, he fought, he fought Devin Haney, like, well, I think, like, six times. And I know for a fact Devin Haney could fight his ass off. Yeah. So, I mean, he was a, a legit fighter. But I could tell you one thing for sure. That was an obvious mismatch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not probably probably not the best fight for him to take after uh, uh, you know uh, uh, after all these all, all these layoffs that he had. You I know? mean, the layoffs. You could say one thing, but layoffs. But you can't say like like just the way he the way Tank was just a step ahead of him. Yeah, you could just see it. I mean, be, me being as a me as a boxer, boxer like right. uh, uh, the kind of boxer I am. I I'm 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 usually two or three steps ahead of you type. Yeah, shit. absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, yeah. And, and yeah. So I'm looking at it like I'm like, damn, he sees that thing. He he sees it and ain't even doing, ain't even biting on it. And he might bite on it with his face, like he said. To, uh, if you was listening, see, I like to listen to to the to the things. Joe Goosen when he come into the ring. He was like, Ryan, he's like, Ryan, move around. Start getting around the ring. Like, fill the ring yeah. out. He didn't go yep. nowhere. He stayed in the yep. corner. And yep. then whenever he got hit with that left hand, he kept coming. But when he got hit with that body shot, see, I've been down before. I've been hurt before. And yeah. I've been hurt in the gym. I've been hurt out of the gym. I've been hurt on the street. I've been hurt in the penitentiary. You understand what I'm saying? Right, so sure. I know what quitting is. I know yeah. you, how you quit. And some people have that quit in your blood. And it don't matter how you look. And I, I know he's a great fighter. I'm not saying on the bottom. But there's something about that. Uh, I don't want to continue. That's That that means a lot. Yeah. Now, you know now I mean? a lot of people a lot of people made a big deal about this rehydration clause. You, do you think that played into it at all? No. No. no nothing uh, at all. Now, do you like a stipulation like that, or, or I mean, or do you think to me, was, it, don't, it don't it don't even matter. Like it, it shouldn't, right? It shouldn't yeah. matter. Yeah. So, uh, um. So, uh, uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, the 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 uh, Seth Southpaw movie. We've seen this before with Chuck Wepner, where he made accusations that well, uh, you know that that, uh, that that Sylvester Stallone kind of stole his life for the Rocky movie. They that that was a definite guaranteed fact. I put my whole life on. I was listen. I was in the rehab. I was in the rehab. Uh, uh, I'm talking about a high class rehab for a year. They was flying me out to the Poconos. Yeah. And I, I I had to write, tell my story and all that shit. I walked. Out, I I seen Jake Paul in Pittsburgh. With, Jake no, Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal in Pittsburgh. And I yeah. I and one of my friends was a, as an actor. He he he. he, he how, why would you come up to me and tell me that you he knows me better than I know myself? And that just makes me sick how everything played that out. It makes me, I mean, I mean, you that's just a, I, I only pieces of shit do that. So, you know, yeah. that's, that's neither here nor there, but it's all good. It, it was definitely, we're, we're, that, that's a no brainer right there. That's a guarantee. Yeah, the guy the the rehab I was in was tr called Transitions, and they was movie makers. Okay, you know what I mean. The housewives I met with the housewives and all that shit. You know yeah. what I mean. They, they, this is not like some shit I'm making up, but that but it's it is what it is. 
Man, I've been fucked more than once. <laughs> <laughs> At least you can smile about it. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. what else can we do sometimes, you know? I mean, what the fuck? I mean, you know, if I, but so what is the right thing? Though? What would you have liked to have seen done differently? Them give you credit, uh, financial compensation? How could that situation have been? I have mean, been I would, right? I would, I would it, it, just be up in front and honest with me and, and, and just, yo, know, like, you can't, you can't, like, you're gonna make a movie about me. You're not gonna do like give me nothing or help me out or nothing. Right, right. You, you know what I'm right. saying? Like yes, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, been like man, I feel offended. I feel so offended. I don't even talk to the uh, one of the rehab guys, the owner of the rehab. He passed away. He was a great guy. Yeah. Even though what happened, he's still a good guy to me because he kept me in the rehab for a year. And and he was and Buddy McGirt was coming in. And he was paying them like five hundred dollars a day to come train me. They built a boxing gym in the rehab. They, I had wow. my own boxing ring. I had my, own, I had heavy bags. You know what I mean? I was lip. It was crazy. You know what I mean? It, it was just, it was just what it was, and it, and it was, and then they come to find out they made that movie South and I'm just like, I, I never, and you know what? To this day, I never watched it. And now, what could have gone down? Like, like you know, as I mentioned earlier, Chuck Wepner obviously uh, ac accused us, Stallone, of doing the same thing with the Rocky franchise, uh, and he actually uh, sought out litigation, trying to get financial compensation. Is that a route that you would ever take, or or, or do you just wash your hands of it all? I mean, I don't even, I don't know how to do none of that. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. It's a shame that they don't give it at least at the very least, it seems like they should at least give you some credit. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that you know, that this movie's about you. And then, and yeah. so what was, what was it that I was reading online that, that they actually tried to say that it was about uh, Eminem? Yeah. That ain't that crazy. <laughs> now, what part? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. I was thinking like, if it's about Eminem, let me and Eminem do an exhibition. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God you got a good sense of humor about it, though. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, getting back to the boxing, though, you know, and, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, when you were in the ring, you did seem to have a knack for making things look very easy. But who was what? Who was an opponent that really pushed you? You know, what I mean, who, who who was in the ring that that, that you that you were, thought was a tough opponent for you? I think I think uh, I think Victoria and Sosa was it was a very hard was hard was a hard opponent for me because of how long the length. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, uh, Dennis Holbeck is. This kid Dennis Holbeck, he was a tough guy. You know what I mean? Leonard Dorn was obviously a world champion, tough guy. There's a lot. I mean, I don't know. There, I fought a lot of people, so it's just a lot of guys get, will give you a little bit of problems. It's just I don't know, man. I I was a box. I was a boxer. I I took it one, and honestly, I took it round by round, one round at a time. You know yeah. what I mean? I win every round. I mean, I don't know how many rounds I lost in my career for real. I couldn't imagine it would be a lot. I couldn't imagine no. it would be a lot. But uh, uh, I'm glad you brought up the Leonard Doreen fight uh, in 2003. That was obviously a uh, draw. When you look back on that fight, and I know that it's, it's very tough to put you in that position to say, you know, because all boxers want to look back at a fight and say that they won, yeah. though. But, you know, but, but but what did you think of that decision, though? I, I think that that was bullshit. I think they should have gave me the knockdown in the fourth round. I agree. And I knew, and I knew for a fact that – he couldn't take a body punch. Yeah. Listen, I swear to God on my life, I want my I, I'll never forget it. My my man, my promoter said we got a rematch with him for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. I was all happy. He said, My brother, my 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 older brother, my brother Harry can he's like, Paul, you can't fight that kind of fight. I said, What? I said, Nah, I'm I'm going, I'm staying on the inside all night till he quits because he's gonna yeah. quit. Yeah. I end up getting a catching a case. He he comes out of retire. He you know he retired, right? Right, right. Yeah. He retired, came back and got that money with Arturo Gotti and got knocked yep. out with a body shot. Yep, he sure did. Yep. You know what I mean? It's, that's just a fact. When you were growing up and you were watching boxing, because you stated that you've been watching uh, your whole life, uh, who were some guys that you kind of like idolized or were influences on you that you I enjoyed mean, I watching? Loved, I, I love I I love I loved. Salvador Sanchez, Pernell Whitaker, oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Willie Pep. 
I used to love them guys and watch hours and hours and hours. Even 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 though you can't fight like Sugar Ray Leonard, I it it's 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 one hell of a guy to watch. You see how the I mean, if he when he gets you hurt, you're dead. You know, Oscar De La Hoya, one of all my them favorites. guys. Like I watched all to everybody. I, I Lou, Lou Pintor. I mean, I'm talking about guys that are like the older guys, Azuma Nelson. Oh you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Now, now, like now, that. now, obviously, we're not seeing. And and Ryan Garcia and Tank Davis last night was a big step in the right direction, I think, for boxing because you're getting two young guys in their prime. They both have, uh, they're both undefeated. We're not seeing that a lot in boxing. Has it started to become? And 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 I think this was asked of Manny Pacquiao uh, by Jim Gray at the fight last night. Are guys not making these big fights because they have really got consumed with losing their O? Is it too much emphasis on that? You know what? I know. Here's what I know for a fact. The reason why my big fights, like big fights, that that never came, is because if I had the, I had a, I had a big following. Right. So in order for me to fight that guy, that my promoter had to give me to somebody else because he was a local promoter. Right. So right. and 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 I don't. It doesn't matter. Like you have to take a chance on losing me. Cause I might lose and I might win. And right. then if I win, you lose. If I lose, you might lose. You know what I mean? Right. right. You know what I'm saying? It all depends yeah. how you lose. Yeah. But I, I think, I think that the, the, the only, I think there's gotta be a way that you stop that. Like, because not only fight, not fighting the big fights, uh, it, it, it does something to the fighter, but it ruined my life, man, it ruined my life. Right. You know, but we, you know, we've obviously I'm got people out fight. there. Hey, listen, I'm fighting. Listen, this is how I looked at it because I, I would look at as a fighter. I'm right. growing up as a fighter. All I ever did was want to be a fighter. Right. Never right. even dreamed about being a world champion. Just wanted to be a 10 round fighter. Matter of fact, I wanted to be the, one of them guys that go in your backyard and just show you you can't fight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, no, I'm being serious. Yeah. So, I love that. But, so I fought Cardona, right? Yep. And, I fought Cardona for the title. He knocked out Ivan Robinson. Max Kellerman saying, "Well, why ain't this? Well, he, this guy could fight. He's ready to fight Angel Man, Freddie, Stevie Johnson." And then not, my next title fight, Steve, is uh, Renardo Cornette. I fly out to Las Vegas and I spar with Floyd Mayweather, and it ain't. And, and I don't have no problems with him. And I'm talking about at that time. Right. And there right. ain't no problems with him. Like, like I put my hands on him. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, he's obviously the best, probably the best ever. So right. why yeah. wouldn't I? Don't understand how how a promoter or any like how don't the how why and what why wouldn't you give why why didn't I fight Caesar Brazon? Why didn't I fight um Stevie Johnson, right. Arturo Gotti? You right. know what I mean? I don't know why. I don't know. All I can tell you is my promoter. You know what I mean? That's the only right. reason I can tell you. But nowadays. Nowadays, I, I, I think that um, I, I, I think it has to do it has to do with the promoters, and I think that that the the guys that are making the fights are in house guys. Like, if you're with Top Rank and you're with uh, Al Heyman and you're with this guy, they they can put the fights together. The good thing is, is like some of them guys are are all together. Right, right, right. So you know what I mean? They can make it happen. So there's a lot of yeah right right so you basically you know there's a lot of politics that hold these fights up. Facts. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, here's the guy that that I'm in the gym with is, um, I don't, what's Lonnie's last name? I don't know, but Lonnie the Great. Lonnie the Great. I know one thing. He could fight his ass off. Yeah. And, and he never and he and, and he and they don't and he never gets a chance to get it to get a shot. Why is that? I don't understand why, how that could be. He's going to be on the shelf forever because no one wants to fight the kid. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what, what, like, what, how, could, how, could, it's just, I mean, I, that's got to be so, it is frustrating. I mean, be, now that I'm not a fighter right now and I'm, I'm, I'm in the position that I put myself in. I can see way different, and it looks a whole. It looks like a whole different thing. Right. And number one, and, and that's the thing. That's the that's the thing that I got going for me. If you fuck, try to fuck my fighter, I ain't. I'm not trying to fuck with you, bro. You're gonna right. get fucked. Right. 
Right. You know what right. I mean? I'm you're, not, you're old school. Like, you're taking care of your fighters. Yeah. yeah. Like if I'm if and when I say taking care of them, I don't know nothing about managing. I don't know nothing about promoting and all that shit. But right. I know about protecting yourself. Right. I know about I know about giving that money, getting that money back. I know about being the best you can be. Right. I can guarantee you when one of my, if you see me in the corner, they're good. At least they're going to be there to fight. Right. Right. When you get shot in the leg back when you were younger, uh, did you have any, uh, you know, did you have any fears that, and, and obviously, you know, you, you famously changed your, uh, changed your stance or whatever, but did you worry that that might be the end of your boxing career? Oh, for sure. I mean, that, 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 that for sure was the number one worry. But my, this funniest thing is about PK. PK was a funny dude. He come in the, he come in the hospital the first day I got shot. He's like, hey, where'd you get shot at? He's asking the doctor, he, did he get shot in the knee? I was like, they're like, no, he got shot in the cab. Oh, he'll be all right. I'm, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny as hell. Hey, hey, bro, soon as I got my walking cast off, soon as I got my walking cast, and you got to remember, I'm from the streets, and I was on the number, I was on one of them, whoo, them yeah. binges that are at 100 miles going north. Right, you know what I mean? Right, Selling yep. crack and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everything yep. that was wrong, I did. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I get, I, I get my stuff. The moment I get my walking cast off, he takes me to a fight. I ain't even know I was gonna fight. I'm barring the mouthpiece. This, this, that. He's funny, man. He was a good guy, man. PK was a good, hell of a guy. So, so, uh, uh, you are uh in the process of writing a book right now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I, and, and it, it'll uh, probably be done in July. And and what was the motivation for doing this? Just wanted to get all these stories out. I mean, yeah, you know, did, like, you, did you almost I, feel I like it was like therapeutic for you? Yeah, and but not only that is like I want to tell say my side. Like, right. hold up, let me tell you. This is wait, you you got me twisted. Like, this is not. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 the and the and the and and like like I feel like. Just like what you said, I feel like that. Like people don't know why I'm not in the Hall of Fame. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. And they right. need to know why. Right. I think they look at the record, they see 49 and one, and they think, "How the hell is this guy not?" You know. Yeah, but it ain't even that. It's just like the. It, let me tell you something. It, it, it's just like, like just like Giovante Davis and Ryan Garcia. When I watch the moment I watched the first second round Cohen. I knew there was a different he there the guy then uh, Giovante was different than Ryan. Yeah. The moment it was uh, this is what I know how to do. This is yeah. what I do. Yeah. You know what I mean? I this is all, all I know how to do. I'm confident about boxing. Yeah. And that's when you really hear it, and that's when you really when you see a fight like last night, I think that's when you really realize what that phrase means when they say that there's levels to boxing, you know? Yeah. You know, I think last night was a prime example of, of Ryan just not being on the same level as Tank at yeah. this point in his career. You know, I mean, yeah. I think and, that and was a fair assessment. I mean, you got to all you the, 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 the one thing the one thing that makes me feel a certain type of way is the not continuing type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially like, especially when this fight was really sold and really built and, and and was really so good for boxing that you know it seems like quitting in a fight like this is is almost uh, you know almost one of those things that you just can't turn a blind eye to. You know, it's, it's yeah, it's pretty like to me, it's pretty disrespectful. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, talk to me a little bit about uh. Um, this work you're going to be doing at the Cleveland Clinic, obviously, C obviously CTE right now, a very big thing in football and in boxing and in you know a a anything where there's any kind of uh, you know uh, uh, well, damage. I'm just, to the head. I'm just doing it just just for other people, just for other fighters to understand. Okay, that, that like I, I like for for me, I really I really see I. I don't. I never really got hit in the ring, but right. I've been hitting sparring. Right. right. I sparred every. I'm old school. We sparred every day. Like yeah. we didn't yeah. spar like twice a week or three times a week. No, nah, we spar five, six times a week. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So and I, and that's coming up. And you got to remember, I started boxing when I was 14 years old. 
Bro, I was in, I was taking, I was in the pen, like going inside the penitentiary four days a week and fighting. Yeah. For two years straight. No, off the record, off right. the record. So what does right. that, that, how many fights do you really got? How many hits you really got to that? How many times you really been hurt? You right. know what I mean? And then when you're doing shit like that, and then you're mixing in the, the alcohol and you're mixing in other things in your life. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. You, I've been there you myself. You can't do it. Yeah. You're taking, you're risking your life. And, and, and at the end of my career, like right now, like I'm just going to keep it 100 with you. One drink today is blackout. Right. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, so, absolutely. And that's not due to nothing but imp can't, um, getting hit on the head damage him with the bullshit you know what i'm saying right right it's the only way you could look at it now talk to me a little bit about the uh the uh, uh training uh your son i think people would be very curious uh uh do you see a lot of the same skill set in him that you had or is he a, a different fighter than what you were uh no doubt no, he 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 has a lot of he got he got very good ring iq he's he's really relaxed and um, I mean, he can fight. The only thing that he needs is a drive. The drive. My drive was different because I mean, look at this house that I'm in. It's a mess. Yeah. I, I mean, I if you look at if you look at my if you I we, I was living underneath a porch. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's a different type of. These guys got playstations. Man, I couldn't even afford a beeper. Oh, yeah. You, I me? you remember yeah. what a beeper was? I yeah. couldn't get a beeper. You feel <laughs> me? So it's like you're like. You know what I mean? You're, you're. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm going to church. Is hitting up for the food. He got all the food he wants. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just a different type of type type of lifestyle. And I'm glad. I'm glad that that he don't have to have to live that life and have to be that in that type of way. I, you know what I'm saying? That he don't have to. You know what I mean? Right. But yeah. also, but also, it, I, I feel that it it does something to the fighter. I think it, it puts. You know, the hungrier the fighter is, I believe the hungrier the fighter is, the more he wants it bad enough. You know what oh, I mean? Sure, sure. Now, now, obviously, uh, you know, uh, Floyd's name came up a couple minutes ago. You know, a uh, big topic that we always hear uh, in all sports. We always hear this talk about who, who's the GOAT, who's the GOAT, who's the GOAT. Is Floyd Mayweather the greatest of all time? It, that that. I mean, it's hard. You could you could say you could say he's the greatest. There's a lot of guys, but you, I mean, like, listen, Chavez was eighty nine and zero, right? Right, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Sugar Ray, that. Willie Willie Pep. How many fights were there? One hundred thirty one. Like all these guys. That, that, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say that. I believe th thoroughly. And I, and people could disagree. I mean, James Tony was a was was a, is a monster. Amazing, and, amazing. I, I mean, unbelievable. Yeah. And Roberto Duran. Oh yeah, amazing, I mean, amazing guys and tough. They, and these aren't guys. And these aren't guys that just fought once or twice a year either. Yeah, I just can't see how I don't how how could how is Duran how is um Floyd going to beat Duran? How would he beat him? Right. Right. Yeah, like how I, I don't him. understand how he would beat him. He's punch. He he go into his Philly show. Nah, bro, he's punching in your arms. His his punches are are all, are serious. Yeah, you, you yeah. know what I mean. I mean, everybody got an opinion, and then again, some bro. Floyd is so great. He he's he's great at what he does. His, yeah, his IQ is unbelievable. Do you think that uh, you, you think that his legacy at all s suffers when he takes these gimmick fights at the end of his career? Should he have just stopped at a certain point? I mean, when he's fighting guys like Jay Paul, yeah. If he would yeah. fight someone like me, nah. Yeah. <laughs> so are you saying right now, Paul Spanafora, that we're calling out Floyd right here? We're doing Let's this? Get it. <laughs> Let's get it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, listen. I mean, hey, he he still wants to lace him up, right? I mean, he still. Yeah. You, know, she, you ain't got nothing better to do. I ain't got nothing better to do. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I like this, man. It is what it is. It's, so, so, you know? so I'm curious now. Uh, you know, when you have a young fighter and your son is fighting. And and you know you're making the point of being very protective of him. Uh, uh, how do you go about doing that though? You know, is it picking the right opponents? Is it being with uh, him with nah, nah, his management? Nah. 
No, you just got to you got to work on your defense, man. You got to work on your boxing IQ. You got to watch. You have to watch. You have to watch films. Yeah. I, I, I watched hours and hours and hours oh, yeah. of films. That's how you become good. Yeah. Yeah. You have to mimic. You have to like guys like Mayweather. You want to you want to be like Mayweather. You got to try to mimic them. How are you going to mimic them if you don't know them? Right, right, right. I, I tell you what, I probably know Willie Pep more than Willie Pep knows himself. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Pernell Whitaker. Pernell Whitaker was one of my favorites ever. He was my trainer at the yeah. end of my career. I mean, he was unbelievable. Yeah, one uh, of the greats my, of all time. Yeah, unbelievable. I, I, I mean, like a, a guy that you just couldn't hit. And not only that, though. What about how about the, how how vicious of a body puncher he was? Yeah, yeah. Man, he was great. He was just yeah. a great fighter. Our and guys I, nowadays, our guys nowadays, uh, are um, you know, when we see like, uh, obviously, we've been hearing about this, uh, Jesus Christ, for the last two fucking years about Spence and Crawford fighting, and they don't seem to don't seem to make it happen. What holds up these fights? I know we talked a little bit about politics, about guys now wanting to lose their undefeated record. You know, I, I think that the only thing that holds something like that up would be probably the one promoter and the other promoter, but it's definitely not the fighters. The fight, them fighters are killers, man. Money. It, it comes a lot of it comes down to money. I mean, I don't, I don't even think it's money with the fighters. I think it's it's just the it's the promoter, the promoters. Yeah, yeah. I I, have, I don't I don't I don't see I don't see Crawford's a killer. Earl Spence is a killer. I don't see they don't mind fighting. They they will fight anybody. Now, when you sit down to write this book, uh, you, you know, um, uh, who inspires you to write this book? Like, you know, is this something you think of yourself? Does somebody suggest it to you? No, somebody asked me that. Yeah? Yeah, I would have never did no shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, why wouldn't you have done it, though? Just because... I mean, I just ain't... I mean, because per yeah, a lot of personal shit that I did, you know, I like, if you're going to write a fucking book, you better tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So like, like the shit I, my life, my lifestyle and how I grew up and I was like, my girl be, I'm not that great of a reader, but my girl be reading it and I'm like, damn, I, I'd be doing some fucked up shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like, holy shit. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, you just got to read it. I mean, you just be like, man, no wonder why this motherfucker was so slick. <laughs> now, 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 is it hard when you're putting that stuff down on paper? Is it hard to revisit some of that stuff? What parts of it yeah. were hard? To, what, what parts of it were the particularly hard? I mean, when, when I lost PK, when I lost PK was hard, you sure. know, and, 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 and me, me growing up, like, you know, my mom shipped doing, 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 you know, my, me and my mom, me and my mom were really, really close. You know what I mean? Yeah. I yeah, had to yeah. go, go, go live, a, go live with somebody, you know what I'm saying? Sure. And like, just like the shit like that. You know what I mean? That's hard stuff to revisit. It's hard to yeah, revisit. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. And very hard to put down on paper and, and, and then, and then release it to the world and say, here's my story. That's probably the hardest part. Yeah, for sure. You know, you know that's very difficult. So, so, um, uh, so, at this point, at this point in your life, uh, when you look back on your career, what is the legacy you'd like people to remember about Paul Spadafore? Man, I, that I could fight my ass off. That you could. Yep, I'm not going to disagree that's with you there. Like, I don't care about one of my favorites of all say, time. People can say whatever they want to say. I can fight my. I, I ain't was never worried about who I was fighting. None of that. I ain't trying to hear none of that. Yeah. In the amateurs, I fought everybody. In the pros, I did whoever my promoter put put in front of me. You can't make up what I you. It's it's right there. You can see. You, you, it don't matter who who's in front of me. You, it, Floyd was in front of me. I fought with. Right. I you know what I mean. I sparred Stevie Forbes, James Creighton. I fought. I sparred all good guys. You, yeah. Lamar Murphy. I mean, it doesn't matter who was in front of me. I could fight my. You had to. You couldn't just walk through me. Right, right, right. And another thing that I love about you too is, is that you don't see a lot of elite guys who get up into the, you know, four, the 35, 40, 45 fights and have uh and 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 not really carry a lot of knockout power. You are not known as a knockout guy. No, at all. 
No, I mean, but but yet you still seem to just be disposing of opponents left and right. I mean, you, you know, that's pretty, you know, that's pretty uncanny to get near 50 wins, but have, you, you know, not, not, not knock a lot of people out. It's hard. It's hard work. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all that comes down to. You figure it's 12 round fights, 10 rounds. How many times I won 12 rounds? How many times I won 10 rounds? Yeah. You know what I mean? I believe right now I can go 10 rounds. You know what I mean? I just try to stay in shape and, you know. Now, one of the fights that I remember the most that really stands out in my mind uh, uh, was uh, the fight you had with uh, Angel Man Freddy, which obviously in the post-fight interview, you know, he felt very strongly that he won, which uh, he obviously did not. Uh, you know, I, I've watched the fight back and scored it, uh, you know, myself. I, when I watch fights, I like to score them as well. Uh, but uh, uh, and uh, you think that you think that at that point, at that point in time, he was going through a very transitional phase in his own life. That was when he became Angel Got Jesus Man Freddy, which, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, do you think that maybe he lost his edge a little bit because uh, because of the lifestyle change? I have no idea. I, I, I thought he was one of the worst guys that I ever fought. You know what I mean? I, I, I had the worst camp. I had, I had the – how you doing on that? Oh, you're back on. Hi! I had the I had the worst camp in my life. I was in camp for like six months. I was trying to come down from 170 pounds, and he was. Uh, I just don't. I he wasn't what they said he was. Like what he wasn't. I mean, I didn't feel too. I didn't feel like he was that good. So so uh, so there's no I mean, point. I beat him. All. I was shocked going into that fight. Like I was shot. I didn't have no legs or none of that. And then and I just beat him off a of ring IQ. Yeah, yeah. And you did make it look relatively easy, too. Yeah, like, I mean, that's because you because the guy let you make it look easy because that's the kind of guy he was. Okay, okay, that's a fair that, that's a fair assessment of him. So so I know I asked you about toughest opponents, but uh, uh, and, and it might be the same answer, but uh, was there anybody that ever really hit you and really rang your bell? Like, who really who, who really hit you the hardest? Oh, man, Victoria and Sosa had me booked. Really? Yeah, he had me knocked. I was knocked. I was on Queer Street. I was knocked out. I don't, that was like winning three fights. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, man. But the but the for the record, the best fighter that I ever was in the ring with ever. Quit, and I'm gonna keep it real with you. Couldn't win no rounds off of Lamar Murphy. Big praise to him. Yeah, you shout know, out you to know Lamar, Lamar Murphy. Murphy? Uh, uh, very vaguely, but I do know who you're speaking oh, of. Man, yes, he can fight his ass off. He was a he was a one hell of a gym fighter. I could tell you that. When you're starting training a guy in in your stable, and someone comes to you and he's a fairly new boxer, what's the first piece of advice or the first thing that Paul Spadafora would want to work on with a new fighter? Like, well, you, you know, like where do you put a lot of your emphasis? Fundamentals and ba fundam be fundamentals. Keep your elbows in your chin tuck. You know what I mean? I'm not really big on the, the hands. Like I, 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 I like the, like, like old school. I'm just like, yeah, old. yeah you are a very throwback fighter. And, yeah. and, and I see, this is the only thing like, you got to be real careful with guys nowadays. I don't know why, but you have to. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Yeah. Like I, I came up sparring every day. Like right. we right. box, we box, man, four, four to five days a week. And then, and then you go to anybody nowadays. That's like, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Well, how do you get better? Is that not the norm anymore? Are guys not sparring as much anymore? Nah, they're not. They're doing like two days a week, maybe three days a week. Some people, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm just like, how the fuck do you do that? I can't, I don't understand that. What was the what was the hardest part when you were in the when you were in the midst of your career? Uh you know, how do you go about, you know, because obviously, and, and you mentioned this earlier, boxing is really a, a lifestyle. It's it, it's 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 not something that you can kind of just, you know, do recreationally as a hobby. You know what I mean? You have to live a certain lifestyle. You have to conduct yourself a certain way, treat your body a certain way. How did you, how do you think that you were able to get away with, uh, you know, uh, you know, not always towing the line, but yet still being able to excel in the ring? Because it's quite remarkable, the fact that you were, you, you were doing all this, all this stuff that wasn't good. But it's still being very successful in the ring. Because I was gifted. I was. I was very. I was very. God. God gave me a gift. A re, a re, like a like a uh, like a radar. You yeah. know what I mean? 
yeah, like, able to make guys misses. And I was I was comfortable in the ring. I, it was it was like <laughs> being like home. You know what I mean? Were there people in your life at this point in time when you're doing these these uh, these bad things outside of the ring? Uh, uh, who were people? Yeah, who, yeah. Who, I mean, you know, did you have people in your life uh, who would try to straighten you out at all? Yeah, I did. I I definitely had that. You know what I mean. But I I I had I had a lot of people in my life that tried to help me out. You know what I mean. But like just like a stubborn. young, just yeah. like a young kid. I get kid. that stubborn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's it's hard I'm a, sometimes. I'm a real day go, bro. Yeah. I know people don't like hearing it, but that's the truth. So, so when you come from uh, uh, the streets of Pittsburgh, uh, you know, how do those streets, uh, you know, how did they shape you as a person and as a boxer? I mean, they may, they, I, I, I feel like, like you had to kill me in the ring. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't going to do that. Like, no, nah, I can't go. I have, you have to go. And yeah. I've been, you know what I mean? I, I know that. And, and the, 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 the thing that I love, the thing that I, the, I really like, um, am proud of is the time when I fought Sosa, when I fought Sosa and I was hurt yeah. and I proved it, that, that ain't, you can't make that shit up. Right. That's in right. front of you. This guy's throwing bombs on you. Hardest puncher at that weight class right now. Right. He's hitting you on the head with that shit. Right, but but when I go back to the corner, there ain't no I, I I ain't getting up and going back out. No, I'm gonna die in here for my family. You know what I'm saying? What was the weight you were most comfortable at fighting? You what? Well, you were one thirty. One thirty five. One thirty five. Okay, yeah. So you're right in the wheelhouse of the guys that fought last night. Then, um, yeah. You, you know, um, uh, did you ever entertain at all moving to any other weights? I never really cared about none of that. You know what I'm saying? Is one thirty five, one forty, whatever. It would didn't matter. Yeah, and and because uh, I, I do remember, and in, in anticipation of this conversation, I, I I did go back and watch the Angel Man Freddie fight, and you did make mention in the post fight interview. Uh, you you made a comment about like you know wanting to fight Floyd around that time. And, yeah. Uh, and 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 it sounded like you were prepared to make a move up to 140 to make that fight happen. Yeah, because I couldn't make that weight no more comfortably. Comfortably, okay. Uh, uh, so, what was cutting weight like for you? Like, you, you know, how close were you to your fighting weight as you're walking around weight? Well, I'll yeah, tell you what. When I was living, when I was living that lifestyle, yeah, I I I would I'd blow up to 160. M money made me money made me money didn't help me. It made me worse. You know yeah. what I mean? Did yeah. I eat anything I never could buy? I never right. could go get what I want. I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm eating whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. eating anything that I can pay for. And that when you got money, you could buy whatever you want. Yeah, manja, manja. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Italian way, right? We like to eat, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, you know, you are living uh, uh, out west now. Do you ever get back to the Northeast at all? Uh, no, I haven't been back yet, but I'm gonna go back and see my mom soon. Okay, and and she's doing well. Yeah, she's doing all right. You know what I'm saying? My mom's doing my my mom's doing really good right now. Good, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. And uh, so, um, uh, what is the status currently of your? I know you said you got a stable of fighters. What's currently the status of your son though? Is still amateur, or has he yet turned pro? Yeah, he's still amateur, but he keeps talking about turning pro, and I'm like, you know. You can't, you, you're not turn. you need to get more fights. You need, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to be a part of it if he tries to turn pro it, it, without listening to me. Right. Is there a right or wrong answer to how many amateur fights uh, a guy should have or how many you'd like to see him have under his belt? I, I, no, I just think there's, a, I think there's a, a level of experience. I think you should, you need to be in the nationals. You need to see how the nationals feels. You need to be in right. them tournaments. You need to be in front of different guys. You know what I mean? Right. In, until you turn pro, what? Like that's like. I mean, on to be honest, to be think about it. You're, you're, you. He ain't Jake Paul. Right. Right. You know right. What I mean? Right. Like, how are you gonna go from not just going to a boxing gym and learning how to box? And, and I take my hat off to Jake Paul. He made ten times more money than I ever made. Right. You know what I'm saying? But. The reality is, like, 
come on, man. We were we worked our whole life. Right, right. And I'm glad you're saying that because I asked uh, I've had a couple other fighters on here and uh you know, I'm interested in your opinion. When Jake Paul and Tommy Fury fought, they were literally going to rank the person who won that fight. Now, as somebody who who, who might start out from a very young age and really work and blood, sweat, and tears and all that shit, and then have somebody come in within like a year or two and have a couple of fights and get ranked, that doesn't seem right. You know what I would say you do to put somebody like that? Whoever whoever made that decision, they need to hang him up and just let me stone him to death. <laughs> Bang, bang, bang. I stoned the motherfucker like that. Yeah, yeah. it just doesn't uh, seem right to guys that are, to, 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 to see guys work their ass off and, and, and try to crack the top 10, you know Yeah, what I mean? that's crazy. That don't even make sense. Like, yeah, it doesn't you know, make You need hooked up for that. Yeah. Anybody who has that kind of money to do that, I mean, you're just destroying boxing. You're, just, you're destroying fighters. Yeah. Like, like, just like I'm saying about my man in the gym, Lonnie, like, what? How in the fuck can you talk about somebody like that whenever you got a killer in the gym who's in the gym every day that nobody wants to fight? And what weight does Lonnie fight at? 168. 168. Oh, yeah. So uh, uh, we saw a couple of 168ers on the card last night. Uh, that yeah. David Morrell. David Morrell yeah, yeah, he don't want no smoke with him. No. Lon Lonnie can fight, man. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like, you know what I mean? I don't understand it. Well, uh, uh, you, you, obviously, we got a lot of talented guys in the sport right now. But as a fan, uh, are there any guys out there that you love to watch right now? I like I like I like watching um, Benavides. I like him. Yeah. Obviously, Crawford and Spence. Is, them two are bad motherfuckers. Now, you know what I mean. As a guy with great fundamentals uh, and a very high boxing IQ, what's your assessment of a guy like uh, like a Lomachenko? He, uh, he's a, he he he's uh, uh unbelievable, unbelievable. Team is unbelievable. Yeah, but he can't. But but make no mistake about it. Then no more, no more. Uh, it, it, he's gonna have a. He'll have trouble with Devin Haney. He'll have trouble with uh Shakur Stevenson. Ta yeah. He ain't beating Tank. Yeah, I just don't think so. I just don't think he's 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 uh can beat them right now. Is it kind of is it kind of bad when you've had under twenty fights and you've already got two losses? Then that, that's not a great look, right? I mean, that's. I mean, I really don't think losses even matter for real. No, it's who you fight. It's who you fight you know well, I mean? he's been in there with great competition, though. I mean, yeah, he, yeah. Four, he did make four, uh, you know, four phenomenal boxers in a row. I mean, quit on the yeah. stool. That's, that's yeah. Same. I mean, he's on. I mean, he's unbelievable. There's no question about it. But I just don't think that. I don't think that he could beat. Devin Haney, I don't think he could be Tank. And uh, him and Shakur would be a tough one, but I don't think he could be Shakur either. Is Tank, because of what he did last night, is Tank, you know, I know they make this big deal about the face of boxing, the face of boxing, but is Tank right now, pound for pound, you, do you think the best I, guy out there? I, I was thinking about that last night, and I, and I was like, man, you, it's hard, it's hard not to, after what he did last night, it's hard not to put him as pound for pound. But then you got Terrence Crawford who fight who fights everybody, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and disposes everybody. The Earl Spence the same. Those three, it's those three. I think. Are you somebody then that would ever? Did, but how about how about Tyson Fury? I know. I love the guy. <laughs> I love him. You know what? He's great for the sport, though, man. He's a hilarious talker, and he's just—I mean, you know—I mean, he sells fights. I mean, oh you know? my god, and he can hey, he's six foot nine boxing like that. Yeah, that, as a guy with great as a guy with great fundamentals, you must really appreciate that. A oh big guy my moving like god, that. It's unbelievable! Look at that right there. That's unbelievable. I know he's a beast. Okay. He's a he's an absolute beast, and he really and he really won all those fights against Wilder because he did get robbed in that first yeah. one. Like, you know, yeah, that was that was no draw. You know, I mean yeah. that, that was that was unfortunate. But but so so, uh, uh, do you have any interest, or do you think the fight with Usyk would be at all competitive, or is he just too big? I, I think that I I think that I, I think that would be the I've hit his hardest fight. Yeah. Yeah, I do because of the boxing style he has. Who's it got that southpaw style? He's in and out. You know what I mean? Fights yeah. a little bit like Limitanko for real. But it sounds like what we're gonna get in July that it looks like it's already signed is Tyson Fury and Andy Ruiz. Yeah, I, I believe that's the fight we're gonna get. Now, do you like that matchup at all? Nah, no, no, uh, uh, that doesn't get I you mean, excited. I think that's a mismatch. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anybody out there, uh, you know, right now in, in the heavyweight division that who could who could hold the candle to Fury, or is he just too good for everybody? I, I don't see it, 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 the Usyk's the only one that could that I think. And does he go down, Tyson Fury, in your opinion, as as the greatest or one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, or does he need more names on his resume? Nah, like he man, he don't need more. He don't need more names. He's, he's done enough. Of, he's one of the best ever. He's what, yeah, he is. I agree with, I agree with you there too. And you're a smart guy about this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, that's why, I, you know, I'm picking your brain and asking your opinion about so much stuff. Cause I think the audience likes to hear somebody that was had such a high ring IQ as you, you know, to speculate and, and give your opinion on these fights. You know, I mean, it's, uh, so the big one that we're, so the big one that we're waiting for is the Paul Spanafora comeback against Mayweather. That's the one we're pitching right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're out there and you happen to come across this podcast, Come on, the Pittsburgh kid wants you. Let's lace him up at 50 years old, right? Why the fuck not? <laughs> hey, hey, what would be a reason not to, you know what I mean? Listen, I'll tell you what, man. I, I, I put a lot of money in Floyd's uh, wallet because, you know what? And I'll, I'll be perfectly He's honest a with you. He's a beast. I bought a lot of his fights, though, and I think a lot of other people did, too. I bought a lot of fights because I wanted to actually see him get beat, and he never did. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I mean... Floyd, Floyd, Floyd did it. When? How about when he fought Cotto, man? He looked amazing when he fought Cotto. Yeah, he did, yeah. Was, like, you know what I mean? And every single time I would buy the pay per views, I would always tell, I would always tell everybody in the family, he's "No, watch. Lose. This is the night. This is the night yeah. that he's gonna lose. No, Ricky Hatton will beat him. No, Pacquiao <laughs> will beat him. No, De La Hoya will beat him. You know, what I mean, I, I, you, you always thought that that the guy you was gotta gonna give him props. He's the best. You know what I mean? You, yeah, you gotta yeah, give somebody like that props. Yeah, you do have to give him props. And I did go to the Hall of Fame this past year, and uh, I did catch a glimpse of him. And uh, you know, obviously, it was a great class that went in this past year because. Because of COVID, we had we, we, we had three years worth of people going in, you know, because they didn't do the induction ceremony for a couple of years. So yeah. I, everybody that went in seemed to deserve it, though. I mean, James Tony you mentioned, he went in, Roy Jones, Ooh. Hopkins, you know, all the legends. Yep. That's what they are, too, legends, man. Yeah, they are legends. No but but uh, are you somebody that ever goes to the Hall of Fame, though, even just to, even just to, even just to be there for Hall of Fame weekend? Yeah, I went to, I went to, I went to the Vegas one. I was out to the Vegas one. And, and I went up to the, I got inducted into that PA, the P, the Pennsylvania one, Philadelphia yeah. one. I went Deserving there, it. you know what I mean? Yeah. Something. So 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 all things right now are going pretty good in Paul Spadafore's life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are. And you look fantastic, man. You look like you could go 12 rounds right now, man. Yeah, I bet you I could. I think you could. Yeah, I, I, I listen. I would want to find out. I mean, you, you know, you, you, you look fantastic, man, and I'm glad everything's going so good for you, man. I really am. And and uh, I appreciate uh, it. Yeah, and uh, uh, I look forward to for sure. Uh, you know, seeing your son when he turns pro. That's going to be very exciting. You think it's a lot of pressure for him having the having the Spanifora last name? I don't. I don't think so. I don't think my son really cares all like that. My son's kind of different. You know what I mean? He yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, when you train him, is it a typical father son thing where you try to tell him things and he doesn't listen? <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> so 100%. Yeah, 100. I think that's the case with all fathers. And my, sons. The only, the only really problem that I got about my son is, is uh, like his his work ethic. I don't, I don't, it, when you, you, when he gets to the gym, he works, yeah. but. It's not to the gym only you work. Boxing right. is twenty four seven. Right. You gotta watch what you eat. You gotta watch how you. You gotta watch how you carry yourself. You gotta have character. You can't do this certain things that you're doing. Right. Right. You know right. what I mean. And expect right. to be a good a good boxer, a real boxer, a ten right. round fighter. You can't do that. You can't eat certain shit and think you're gonna be able to perform at a certain level. Right. Right, right, right. Yeah, it is. It, it is. You hit the nail on the head. It, it, it is a lifestyle. Now, do people think sometimes that you can get away with not doing it because you were able to do it? Yeah, people really believe it, but they don't understand. I I was able to do it, but I would have cut off. Like, I would go six, seven weeks without doing nothing. And yeah. I put my body through, sometimes six months, put my body through hell. Because of the shit that I was doing on the, in the out on the outside, right? You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. it wasn't yeah. like that. I would. I was like totally. I was definitely 
anytime, anytime you pick up drugs and alcohol, you disrespect boxing. You ain't a boxer no more. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Period, point blank. So, you know, but people don't understand. There's more to, there's more, there's more to, uh, uh, there's the reasons why you pick shit, the shit up like that. Yeah. Well, listen, man. This has been a real treat for me, man. It's been an honor getting the chance to talk to you for a little while, man. And uh, hopefully we can keep in touch and we can do it again sometime on down the road, man. I, this was really enjoyable, man. And I really appreciate you doing it, man. Hey, really. man. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much, man. From the bottom of my heart, man. I really appreciate it, man. Thank, thank you so you. much. And I'm glad to see that things are going well for you. And uh, really looking forward to the book. Really looking oh. forward to it. Uh, uh, will there be an audio version of the book? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And will, and will, will you narrate it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, it is great. And, and, and in recent years, I have become a very big fan of the audio book. My eyes are not what they used to be. And I Man, think it's, and I think it's great. That's idea because then I can really tell. I, I think it's when great. I get you on them, when I tell you what the things that I, the right. the shit that I did. And that's what I like the most. Book. It might be a comedy. It might and be that's comedy. what I like most about the audiobooks, though. When somebody writes a biography or their memoirs, I like when they do an audiobook and they narrate it themselves because I think nobody can really tell your story and put emphasis on those spots like you can. You know what I mean? Because you lived it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And there's certain, I mean, there, there's certain, there was a certain uh, uh, time in my life that, like, really, if I audioed it, it would be funny as hell. Yeah. Yeah. You know Please, do. Please do. Please do. Uh, I bet. <laughs> uh, I'm really looking forward to that, man. And uh, I'm looking forward to everything that you do. I, I keep up with everything that you do, man. And uh, I, I wish you continued health and success, man. I really do, man. Thank you thank so you much. Very for doing much. This, man. Yeah. Yep, thank and, uh, you. Uh, and when I put your episode up, I'll send you the link and you can feel free to share it wherever you'd like. Okay. Thank you. Nice talking to you, Paul. Really. Uh, thank yep, you so do the right much, thing, my man. All right. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it, buddy. Yep. All right. Take it easy. Folks, need I say more? That is the great Paul, the Pittsburgh kid, Spanifora. Uh, one of, if not the greatest pure technical boxer of all time. You don't end up with a record of 49 and 1 by accident. Not only was that guy putting it on motherfuckers in the ring, he was living a fucking treacherous lifestyle outside the ring. So go figure. The guy was blessed with an immense amount of talent. Touched by the hand of God, I would say, even. Uh, the guy was just a natural, phenomenal boxer. And uh, go back, I implore you, go back and watch on YouTube some of his fights. Just an amazing, amazing ring IQ. Not a guy that knocked people out, but a guy that would just pick you apart and just, you know, just break you down throughout a fight systematically. One of the greats. Uh, be on the lookout, as you heard, for his book, which he says will be finished up in July, uh, probably available sometime in the fall. Uh, uh, hopefully, I implored him to uh, narrate a version of the audio book, which I really hope he'll do because, you know, I am somebody that stands by the fact that your own story should be told by you. You know how, where to put inflections in the stories and, you know, uh, you know, really how to narrate what you were going through at that particular point in time in your life. And uh, I think it, it, it does the book a big service when people narrate themselves. But that's just my opinion. But it will still be a great book nonetheless because that guy has lived in the ring and certainly outside of the ring. Uh, had a lot of scrapes with, uh, uh, you know, with uh, the law and all this stuff is highly publicized. Uh, his own demons with addiction, uh, and 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 look at him right now. He looks fucking fantastic. I couldn't be happier. Be on the lookout for his son Gino, who he is training, uh, who will probably be a chip off the old block uh, if he's got even half of his father's skill set. He's going to be absolutely amazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed that episode with the Pittsburgh kid himself, the great Paul Spadafora. I hope you guys loved it as much as I did. Keith Hernandez as an athlete. I mean, come on. Fucking love that guy, man. Been a fan uh, the guy's entire career. Just a, a magician in the ring. I can't say that enough. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. And until we meet again to do this thing, I remind you guys out there to take it easy and keep it sleazy.